Hello, welcome back to Brandon Sushi Life Pudding. In this episode, I'm gonna uh, show you one method. Um, it's kind of like a shortcut thing. Um, you know, remember in the previous Life Noting video, I was talking about uh, this plugin for Maya called Qtown, and it was uh, created by Brave Rabbit, and that plugin allows users to quickly generate some kind of uh, like a city this. Um, kind of cutting an area of a district and then kind of placing buildings um, and I kind of um, I want to try to build that in Blender and this is a this is a quick test that I did basically what I did was um, I made like a like some hundreds of buildings using Brave Rabbit plugins in Maya and then I exported out as OBJ and with that OBJ, I have like uh, around 625 buildings. So I, I was thinking, okay, I'm thinking to build all these little buildings uh, procedurally in uh, Spreadshock at some point. Perhaps I, I will even add my own design. But for now, I will actually do a quick shortcut, you know, just take this building without its shader or material. It doesn't have any texture, but I, I grab the whole building and I kind of center it out um, in Blender. Um, I call this is like a like a cheat kind of thing, uh, like a shortcut. If you ever want to do this, you can of course always do it this way. You you bring in the buildings into Blender, so you already have a bunch of building models. Obviously, this is something that can be created by hand by three um, D modeler, but of course this was being generated by the the Qtown um, plugin in Maya and yeah at the moment I have not got a, a setup that generate this building but we can use this building because this is like a I think this is like over 600 design like I said um, all I did was to center each building and of course they are not on the floor so in this live noting video I'll show you I have this uh, slight modification from previous uh, node 3 setups uh, where I simply place a box on the ground. This one actually can help you to place any kind of objects um, on the ground. So in this case, this these buildings. Um, you can use Python script um, to actually do this. I, I can give you the link. There is Python script that simply look at an object and then kind of place this object on the ground and then kind of um, zero out its uh, transform. But I'll do it procedurally using Spreadshop. So we have offer 600 building and offer 600 building we can really use this for our instancing. You don't actually need to do more. Maybe if you want, unless you want to do a little bit more with these buildings. Currently we have this kind of pretty standard um, good looking buildings. They are quite believable I think. Um, and you can simply use this um, and instance it using particles. So yeah, like I said, this is a shortcut, you know. Um, you might want to do a little bit more than this, but if you really need it, you can just simply do use this. But in order to get these buildings, you need to probably download Maya and then get Maya free student versions and then Brave Rabbit add-ons and then install it and try to run. It's a... It's an interesting little plugins, but anyway, uh, yeah, this is the result, and then I can use this in Spreadshock, and I'll get the selection here. One, two, three, four. So five buildings I'm selecting, and I switch to Spreadshock, and all this setup <clears throat> will give us the buildings placed on the floor. There's a there's a slight. Uh, it's not a limitation. It's actually the Brave Rabbit plugins kind of generate the buildings and rotate it slightly depending on the on the on the plate it is sitting. So but I can I think I can rotate it. So it's not a it's not a problem at all. Where is the rotation? So maybe this guy rotation yeah so yeah I can just rotate it so it's uh it's aligned properly. And currently we have five building of course um this guy actually do the this guy do the placement place on the floor thing, but we don't 
uh, we don't need to do it. Uh, we can actually apply the matrix there. So matrix apply will assign this uh, transform and kind of make the position of the building correct. So it's flush on the ground perfectly. So the next thing we want to do, you know, just uh, let's see. So we have five objects. Okay, we can use line modifier here and plug in there. We can have five points line, so we have this building. We can arrange it in any way we like. Currently, I'm using Sphere Talk, but I I already mentioned as well that if you have model that's over one thousand, you know, like you need if you need offer one thousand objects. 5,000 actually, 1,000, 5,000 Sphere Chalk can handle it, um, Blender can handle such objects as well, but if you want to be efficient, if you have like, if you want to do like 100,000 objects, don't do that, just use instancing, uh, Blender Particle Instancing or Dupli. So anyway, we have five objects, I don't want to be limited to just five objects, I really want to kind of being able to have unlimited number but it's okay, currently we're just gonna grab some more. So here we have I could actually grab all of them. Um not sure if it's gonna be too heavy for this one really I am just gonna grab a bunch of them and bring it into Sphere Show. I can bake it actually. Select objects, get selection, and now we have our objects ready for us. They are all flush on the ground. How many objects do we have? 387. Wow, okay. See, very quickly you get this all these buildings that you can use in blender um, actually with a with a brave rabbits plugin you get this building with texture as well so that's a uh, something to think about um, for what we are doing we can yeah we can really apply that shader as well the texture uh, from brave rabbit but you can use your own texture the nice thing about this of course they are all have uv actually so line, lines, okay, lines, I will use a grid, maybe 20 by 20 grid. Plane NK2 and I'll just make it 10 by 10, you know, 100. Plug this to the matrix. They should be flush on the ground. You can center it, normalize. There, they look, they look pretty good. Um, I'm gonna... Switch the camera actually few few selected. It's okay. Now we have this. All right, bunch of building ready for us to be used in any way we like. So I I show you this example. This is one. Um, I'm just using a cylinder and place the building on every face of the cylinder. This one is a little bit more random. It's based on the letter S. It's actually like live text. Um, yeah, this this one is interesting. Um, but for now, see, I could bake this guy and should get building. This guy actually might actually lost all the UVs because we bring it into Stretch Up. Uh, yep. We could do any kind of uh, setup now. Um, I believe center polygon. If I use cylinder, cylinder, it will respect the normal. So I'll use cylinder. Whoops! Actually, Blender probably just crashes. But I think I already saved it, so I just need to restart it. Sorry about that. I think it's my my computer easily crashes. 
uh, let's go back real quick and do final thing with the cylinder thing just an example but really uh, at this stage um, we know that we can kind of control the placement of the buildings we already imagine we kind of because we we took a shortcut way to to use the buildings uh, we don't need to worry about the creation of the buildings one day we will be able to generate our own buildings for now See, okay, this is what we get. Luckily, I saved. Say, I'm using a cylinder. And center, get the center of each polygons. The matrix actually gave, gave us the, the normal as well, this center matrix. Very, very handy. We don't need the cap, we can turn off the cap, plug in the polygon there, and center, just plug in the center to the matrix. How many polygon face we have? 12 times, we have too little, I'll give it more, 10, 120, this guy, height, so yeah, I think something funky with the rotation there. Should go back and rotate the building slightly. Currently, the grid of the cylinder is all pretty um, even and equal, you know. But for building in the street, normally they're not they're not always fully aligned like this. They have some kind of sometimes you have gap as well, so. Let's actually make it more realistic, so something to think about. Radius, I can change the radius. So yeah, some building. I don't know. I change it and uh, it rotates again. So the normal must be like uh, very dependent on a lot of things. Okay, so that seems to be working fine for us. If you want the buildings to be pointing inside, you can you can do that as well. I'll make this like five by five, and then I can just use uh, flip normal. So a lot of nodes already, um, allowing you to do a lot of. Uh, typical modeling operations All right there we go we got it uh, seems like when we reverse it it's doing the normal it's it's rotating again I don't know why it's all good you know uh, the nice thing about this, of course, we have full control of everything. For instancing, of course, like I said, 1,000 objects is fine in, in Spreadshop, but if you have more, 10,000, just use a, use particle instancing, that will be more efficient and you will render it faster as well. Okay, so from this, we have like 300, uh, how many, 600, 300 variations of the buildings. If you have like a ten thousand and you want to reuse the reuse the instance, you can use list item and kind of randomize the building that way. Maybe I should show that as well. So back to back to our line. I prefer to use like a simple example for to explain the concept because that's really what's matter. The advanced part, you know, the complicated stuff with all complexity is uh, something you... It's actually easier than the, the simple part. Line MP3, okay, I'll make it like 12, 10, okay, 10. They're all slightly rotated, that's okay. This is what I mean, list item.
plug this guy in there. You will see something really cool happening. You already seen this being done, but I, I never use um, like a like a complex instance like this one. Normally, I just use like a basic simple object. Okay, so oh, okay, it needs to be on level one. See, level one give us this building, very funky. So random number generator. Let's give it a size of one first and value between. It doesn't matter this one. If I we give this like a size of one, it's gonna give one random value. And it will pick from the three hundred eighty-seven buildings. It will pick one randomly. So we can have see that kind of design because we have one, two, three. We have ten now. If we say okay, give ten random numbers, and it will pick ten random building. See, that's a uh, very cool. And you can, you know, you can adjust this. Make this number between three hundred. Give a value between zero and three hundred eighty-seven, and really just randomize it. This way, you can really use all these uh, monopoly buildings for your purpose whatever it is yeah um, from here on to, to the final if you if each building already have materials and UV um, you can have like a final something that uh, will looks nice when you render it out but of course the ground needs to look nice and then the lighting maybe the Sun kind of lighting and then uh, maybe you need to add some couple of trees and then a lot of like cars humans that all people walking on the street all those will be also another complexity in itself you know um, but I I think I yeah I think kind of like to share this this part of theory like this part of the design so for the building itself if at some stage I will do a little bit of study of these buildings and then try to recreate it um, using Spreadshop I think that's will be more challenging and more fun anyway that's pretty much it for this live learning hopefully you find this useful thanks again for tuning in and i'll see you in the next video thank you bye